Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and we are here to talk about DirectX Ultimate! Ultimate! Yeah, it's probably one of the dumbest names ever. In fact, I've always thought DirectX was a really stupid name, very much of the 90s. You know, back when things were triple X and to the extreme or max. It was not a good period in time. And throwing Ultimate on the end makes it even dumber. But the truth is, this is a very interesting development that was announced at, uh, let's call it the Not Game Developer Conference, for reasons that I honestly can't mention, which is really, really stupid. Um, the Game Developer Conference didn't happen this year, uh, but there were all the announcements that would have come out from that conference, and the announcement of DirectX Ultimate is one such announcement. So here we are, we are on the DirectX Developer Blog, and this is from Sean, and that's actually interesting in just a minute. I will explain why Sean is interesting, but first, let's talk about DirectX Ultimate. So you know what's interesting? This is going to make you feel old. DirectX 12 came out six years ago. Six years years ago. That is absolutely insane. But DirectX 12 Ultimate is basically DirectX 13, I suppose you could say, or DirectX 12B. It's an extension on top of DirectX 12 to add new features and functionality. The key things being here, uh, DirectX ray tracing, variable rate shading, mesh shaders, and sampler feedback. Now, technically, DirectX ray tracing and variable rate shading were already actually kind of added, but what this is is a kind of a stamp of approval. Anything that is listed as DirectX 12 Ultimate compatible is going to have all of those feature set. It's a way of future-proofing the ecosystem. Now, if this is sounding a little bit like games for Windows Live, you're not completely wrong. What this is going to do is make it so that if you buy a certain baseline amount of hardware, you're going to be compatible with the X series of consoles. So right now we've got the Xbox X, I'm sorry, the One X, the um, we, so yeah, Xbox One X, then we're going to have the Xbox, whatever the next one is going to be called. And then you're also going to have any Direct X 12 Ultimate compatible PCs. And developers are going to be able to target all of those using a, the same API. Now, once again, the key things here is we've got new, uh, they're talking about, uh, you know, it's going to have support for existing features, Direct X ray tracing and variable rate shading. Also the new major features of mesh shaders and sampler feedback. We'll get into those in a little bit, uh, but DirectX 12 Ultimate is fundamentally an additive initiative that provides gamers with assurance that their hardware meets the highest bar for feature support in next generation games. It is very important to note that DirectX 12 Ultimate will not impact game compatibility with existing hardware, which does not support the entire breadth of the Direct DirectX 12 Ultimate features. In fact, next generation games which use DirectX Ultimate DirectX 12 Ultimate features will continue to run on non-DirectX 12 Ultimate hardware. Although such hardware won't provide the visual benefits of the new features, it can still provide a very compelling game experience on next generation games depending on the specifics of the hardware. Uh, on top of that, this is in addition to DirectX 12, we got a couple of tools being mentioned such as the PIX graphics optimi optimization tool and the open source HLSL compiler or the high level shader language compiler that is the uh, GLSL equivalent in the world of DirectX. Um, so essentially, it is a, a branding system for PC games to be compatible with the Xbox X series of hardware. And you see kind of where they're going with this. And I guess that's kind of what they're saying here, amplifying a virtuous cycle. As any gamer would attest, there are few higher virtues than the appreciation of a well-crafted and beautiful game. Okay, that's a weird sentence. Uh, DirectX 12 Ultimate creates unprecedented opportunities for the entire gaming ecosystem, creating a self-reinforcing virtuous cycle that results in a better gaming experience. All right, you think a marketer wrote that? I think a marketer probably wrote that. Uh, the cycle below describes the general graphics improvement process in games that occurred for many years. As new hardware slowly reaches market saturation, the number of addressable sockets within the next generation graphic features increases. As the number of sockets within those features increases, the number of game studios willing to adopt the new features likewise increases until finally market saturation of hardware occurs and most game studios adopt the features. Prior to DirectX Ultimate, there was very, very, little, very little limited... Okay, yeah, I added my own word. Overlap between two cycles. Even when hardware was similar, the software interfaces were dissimilar, discouraging aligned adoption by developers. By unifying the graphics platform across PC and Xbox Series X, DirectX Ultimate serves as a force multiplier for the entire gaming ecosystem. No longer do the cycles operate independently. Instead, they now combine synergistically. Uh, when Xbox Series X releases, there will be... Uh, Many millions of DirectX 12 Ultimate PCs in the world uh, with the same feature set, catalyzing a rapid adoption of new features. And when Xbox Series X brings a wave of new console gamers, PCs will likewise uh, benefit from the vast surge of the new DirectX 12 Ultimate capable hardware. 
So what you're getting is easier adoption to the new features. Existing hardware is better supported, makes it easier to support older hardware, uh, PC, and then the new Xbox platforms. It's basically the idea between, behind Xbox Ultimate. The big things here are the ray tracing. Obviously, ray tracing was already in place, and we're kind of getting to know what ray tracing is all about. After that, we've got the variable sh uh, rate shading. Uh, allows developers to selectively vary a game shading rate. This lets them dial up the GPU and more important parts of the game uh, for better visuals and dial back the GPU power in less important parts of the game for better speed. Variable rate shading also has the advantage of being relatively low cost to implement for developers. This is actually really kind of nice when you're talking about scaling across hardware once again. So if you've got the ability to, to rake up and down uh, the shading rate, you, you know, you've got an easy kind of power adjuster switch there. And then finally, mesh shaders give developers more programmability than ever before by bringing the full power of generalized GPU compute to the geometry pipeline. Mesh shaders allow developers to build more detailed and dynamic worlds than ever before. If you are wondering, hey, what about Vulkan? Doesn't it support this as well? Well, yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, but you can kind of get much more detail. I'm not going to go into the full details of what mesh shading is all about because as you can see, it goes into some detail there. But I will, of course, drop a link to that down below. And then sampler feedback enables better visual quality, shorter load times, and less stuttering by providing detailed information to enable developers to only load in textures when needed. And once again, you can go into a lot more detail about how that process works. I will link all this down below so you don't have to go into it in this video because this video would get very, very long. So that is kind of it. That is the announcement from Microsoft themselves. Now you may be wondering, okay, well, that's nice. Who's going to support this? Well, obviously the new uh, Xbox hardware is going to support it, but actually some people do to this current day. But before we move on, a little bit of trivia. That name sounded all familiar, Sean Hargraves. Well, actually, I've known this guy for 25, 30 plus years because this is the author, the original author of the Allegro DOS-based library. It actually started off in... Well, the A, I think, stood for Atari. So uh, it goes back for a very long time. But if, if you're wondering, um, he is now the head of the Xbox team in some capacity. I'm not sure his direct title, but yeah, he's an important guy on the DirectX team now. So the guy that wrote Allegro, if you've ever used it all those years back, yeah, he's now in charge of Xbox. Oh, sorry, um, DirectX, which is kind of cool. So anyways, in terms of who actually supports this stuff, well, we have uh, NVIDIA on board in a big way. Uh, so they've already got this page up as well. I will link to that um you know, in the same linked article down below, kind of goes through the same things. You've got some videos explaining each one of these things. So again, we've got variable rate shading and then mesh shading being added, sampler feedback, and of course, ray tracing, which was already in existence. If you're wondering about the supported GPUs, so right now, NVIDIA is the only one that has current gen hardware that supports the DirectX Ultimate logo or name or branding or whatever. And those cards are the Titan X, the RTX 20 series on the laptop, the RTX 2080 Ti, 2080 Super, 2080, 2070, 2070, 2060 Super, and then finally the RTX 2060. So basically all existing RTX cards, although I do believe they no, they didn't brand. The GeForce 1650 and 1660 are not RTX cards. They are um, so they do not have the dedicated RTX hardware or the ray tracing hardware in them. So they are not supported. So that is it from the NVIDIA side. So basically all of their modern uh, premium cards, all their modern RTX cards are going to be uh, DirectX Ultimate compatible or already are, I suppose you could say. And then from the uh, AMD side of things, they've also come in here and they're going to be supporting with the RDNA 2 uh, hardware going forward. Now do keep in mind, AMD are actually the power, the technology ultimately powering um, the Xbox next generation and I believe the PlayStation next generation. So obviously from the platform side of things, they are going to have support and they're basically getting into the same stuff. Once again, the four key features of ultimate ray tracing, variable, shade, uh, variable rate shading, mesh shaders, and sampler feedback. Now don't forget, obviously uh, DirectX 12 has support for everything DirectX 12 currently has on top of those four new features. Uh, so they don't have any hardware on the market right now that supports this, but their new AMD RDNA 2 architecture will. So when they start releasing new cards in the future, um, they will have support as long as they have that RDNA 2 architecture. And of course, that is going to mean uh, that the Xbox X hardware from AMD obviously supports this as well. And ironically, it could actually mean that, that the PlayStation does as well, but I, I can't see that happening, at least 
I doubt that would happen. But anyways, that is the Direct X12 Ultimate Initiative. Uh, some interesting stuff in here. It, it's, you know, basically a funky brand extension. Sorry, it's a funky extension to the DirectX SDK um, features and functionality. Add those two new features and decodify the two existing ones. Um, and these are all nice features. And ray tracing definitely is nice, but mesh shaders and sampler feedback should be nice as well. Again, if you want to get into more details, I will link this original article. It goes in, it's probably the the biggest bit of detail you can get on these things. You can drill down and learn a bit more about all of those technologies. So that will be linked in the article down below, but definitely um, interesting at the very least. It, it, you can see that Microsoft's moving towards having, you know, one API to rule them all. And they're obviously trying to move away from the idea of console generations. And I, I think it's a, it's an interesting move. It's going to bring the platforms and the PC closer together. Um, I, I don't see it as a loss by any means. And, and it does make it easier for um, developers to develop for today's hardware and then scale it onto the Xbox One X when it comes out. So they at least know what bit of today's hardware, you know, being that uh, those NVIDIA cards 2060 and better will be basically compatible with the feature set of the new Xbox coming out. Now, I don't have a release date for the SDK. Uh, be interesting to see when that actually comes out. Um, we'll be adding the 12 underscore two feature level in the API in the next update to Windows after 20 H1. For now, all the features that make up uh, DirectX 12 Ultimate are implemented, ready for games to start using, but the feature level Anum is not yet implemented. Uh, so I don't know when we're gonna get our hands on these SDKs or we're gonna be able to run any of this stuff, but uh, yeah. That's it. Uh, definitely uh, worth checking out. Also, keep in mind, there's some linked articles off here. There's a getting started guide available um, right here. Oh, okay, so here we got a little bit more detail, actually. Until then, anyone can get pre-release builds of Windows using the Windows Insider program. So if you want to go down that road, uh, you're basically going to be doing it on a virtual machine, and you're going to be using Insider versions of the SDKs as well. I'll, I'll link this as well in... Um, looks like we've also got some of the DirectX 12 Ultimate features being showcased in the samples uh, repo as well. So uh, this is a nice list of uh, resources to get you going. We'll link that down below as well. So that is it. That is DirectX 12 Ultimate. Once again, one of the dumbest names in my opinion. It was dumb when it was DirectX 12 and it became even dumber when you threw Ultimate on the end. But on the whole, an initiative that definitely looks interesting. Let me know what you think of this, of this movement of kind of tying the two platforms a little bit closer together. They've done that in the past and got kind of burned. But I think we're, I think we're living in a different world. I don't think we're going to be seeing, you know, um, Windows Live for Games or whatever the hell it was called, version 2.0. I think this is a better approach and it, it's going to be uh, interesting to see how this all works out. But let me know what you think. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.